somebody. Feel free to scoot over. It's not a big deal. Uh, if you want to move up or back or whatever is comfortable for you, that's perfectly fine. Um, we're just glad we're all in the room together um, uh, for this morning's worship service. So thank you uh, so much for uh, being a part. Um, you may know some of the previous rules. Uh, we only got one Sunday under our belt before when we tried to do this. Uh, and we have no guarantees there'll be another one after today, but we're, we're giving it a shot. So uh, a couple of things, you know, we've, the communal singing, uh, the hymn singing is a, unfortunately uh, not a part of the services right now. Too many singing, too, much, too many people singing is not the best idea, right? Uh, Lisa's going to do some special stuff for us. Um, our friends, our sisters and, and Steve are, have graciously agreed to do uh, some special music for us today. Um, we have some limited liturgy, which you'll participate in uh, today as well. Um, but, uh, and of course, uh, the greeting is a whole lot different than it used to be. Uh, so, uh, but we'll explain all that stuff as we get to it. Um, a couple of brief announcements for you uh, today. Um, yes, we are gathering together this Sunday, but we are going to take it week by week. Um, that's all we can do. Uh, we can follow the rules. We can be super careful. Uh, we have a few people in a large space, so that's already working for us. Um, but uh, we'll just be in touch on a weekly basis. And uh, we also plan on sending uh, portions of the service, uh, which are being um, recorded today, out to those who cannot be present uh, as well. So those will be included as well. Um, a lot of things have happened since we've been together last. Uh, we had... We had an annual conference online. Um, if you think annual conference is boring in person, you should really try it online. Man, it's tough. Tough, tough, tough. Um, but uh, we did that. Um, our charge conference uh, is actually this afternoon, and it's also online. And, uh, but it's very streamlined, and it's just kind of moved through the motions to officially call it a conference. And um, so. Uh, It'll also be uh, kind of uneventful, I think, but I'll be glad to share that stuff with you uh, later as well. Um, a brief update on a few other things. Our, um, our food pantry continues to meet twice a month and offer food to the community as it has in the past. They have adjusted their uh, way of offering as well, where they meet people at the door rather than coming in together and having a large group inside. So that's, um, that's changed. And um, we are in the process right now of being in touch with all of our partner organizations and groups and seeing how they might feel comfortable being back in the space at some point. Uh, there's been a lot of juggling and change that uh, Linda has certainly worked hard on, and uh, we're, we're still in that kind of, those kind of throws as well. So just to let you know those things. Are there any other announcements I need to share today that I'm forgetting with the community? No, okay, well, it is uh, wonderful to see you. Um, take a moment, um, center yourself, uh, take a deep breath, and uh, prepare for worship.
call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. You, O oh God, know our hearts. I have our hearts so glad. You, O oh God, see our ways. Shake our ways, O oh God. You, O oh God, call our spirits. Call us now, O oh God, as we call on you. Happy are we, O oh God, when our hearts are full, our ways are yours, our spirits enlivened by your call. Happy are we, O oh God, when our lives are guided by delight. We gather here today for just that, holy God. We gather to draw on all you would give us to be more yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's the new greeting. We tried it once before. I'm just calling it the smile and wave because that's really all you can do. So if you want to turn around and wave at someone that's in worship today since we can't hug or shake hands, it's good to see you. Uh, I'll let you be seated. And I know we have a few guests that, Linda, do you want to introduce some guests that are here today? Uh, yes, I have my brother-in-law, Fred Offman from Illinois, and his friend Joan. And then these are the Carltons, who are friends of ours. And so we're glad to have all of Wonderful. Thanks for being here. Jim and Cheryl Carlton. Great. Um, one of our good friends from uh, a little farther south of Atlanta, from Fairburn, is here, Jill Lucas. Jill, it's so good to see you. She's threatened to join us for church, and when we started back, and here she is, so glad. Amos, you want to introduce? Uh, this is my friend Lily. Uh, she, uh, she's been close to the waters. Good. Hi, Lily. Good to see you again. Uh, thank you again uh, for your presence uh, today and participating in the service. from the book of Psalms, the first division, and it reads, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They're like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its seasons and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked will perish. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, these two songs that we're doing as a medley are appropriate for these troubled times. The sun is slowly sinking. The day is almost gone. Still darkness falls.
comments about uh, where we are today. Um, we are just at an inch of the starting line in all of this. We're certainly not back. <laughs> Don't, it'd probably be a, you know, a bad omen if you walked out of here and said, we're back, our church is back, when maybe we don't know what's going to happen, right? Um, and we may not ever be back to the format that we used to be. And who knows? That might not be all bad. But it's just a step. It's just a start. It's just a move in a hopeful direction. It's an opening move. I don't know. It's like chess, except we're just moving pawns today. We're not moving kings and queens. It's going to take time and work and patience and prayer and courage and luck and compassion and so much more. How are you feeling about it? Are you glad to get out 
and come back? Or were you a little nervous about coming today? Were, how are you? A little nervous? Not just the singing, but just coming into <laughs> the singing and the nervous, right? Were you like, I had to relearn the Sunday routine this morning. <laughs> I was like, did I get up early enough? I have to do this. I, what am I going to wear? What time do I need to be there to set up? Nothing. So, I had to go start all over because we, I haven't gone through the process. Um, if you happen to be home a lot, I, I know, uh, you know I'm working a lot from home. Uh, the thought of putting on clean clothes aren't always at the top of the list because no one's going to see you. Right? Brushing your hair? Like, who's, who cares if they're not going to see you? Today I think we got kind of lucky with the lectionary scripture reading that was provided in the New Testament. Uh, it's quite appropriate. It's, it's incredibly familiar. Uh, it's not too confusing. So on the first day back, we didn't get like a really... Just overwhelming. It's, and it's so authentic to our mission and our identity as people of faith. Uh, it's kind of also one of the inaugural ones, right? It's, you can't really fight this one. Um, here are the reading today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, he being Jesus, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. He said, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and all the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. The word of God, for and through us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. I'm not going to ask you this morning what this scripture means. You've heard it so frequently in so many times and places. I'm not going to ask you if you have been following these two critical expressions of our faith. How you've been doing, when and where. Don't need those details. I'm also not going to ask you which one is harder. The God part or the neighbor part. We all know they both have their challenges. But I am going to ask you this instead. Why do you think this scripture is here today? Why do you think this is the one here for us on this day when we come back together? Is it appropriate? Is it one of those right place at the right time kind of things? Much of life and faith seems to be not about just the messages that we learn, but it's about the timing of the message, right? We all know what it's like to hear something when you need to hear it. When it's at the right moment. Encouragement comes best when you need encouragement. Right? Compassion, when you need compassion. Friendship, when you need a friend. The thing we used to talk about, hugs, when you need a hug or support. Why this God and neighbor scripture now? There is this long-standing theological debate regarding how to interpret scripture. And it has, to oversimplify it, it has two basic sides. One side says, Scripture just is what it is. 
You can't change it, can't adjust it. What it says is what it says. What it means is what it means. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, period. And it's tempting, I think, to want to have something in our lives made of such, like, concrete, right? But it's hardly practical, and it's really not even a faithful way of interpreting. Let me finish. So the other side of the argument that some have is that Scripture does change. It does adapt. It does adjust in times of need, depending on its context, its place, its moment. What does it mean for you, for us, for them in this particular moment? How can Scripture change? This is really appropriate considering probably most of us, hopefully you've been watching the things I send you every week, but you've probably been watching lots of different churches that have been present online, right? Or maybe on television, or maybe listening, right? And you know where you were doing that? From your home, I'm guessing. Maybe even on your phone. Maybe sitting in your living room, maybe sitting around the kitchen table. That in itself is a huge adjustment. When you walk in a building, a place that is considered a sanctuary of places, right? Something comes with that. I think scripture is read differently here than it might feel around your, your uh, kitchen table. You can put me on pause every week. Hold on. I gotta go get something else to eat. Somebody's at the door. That dog won't stop barking. Whatever it is. Maybe you wish you had a pause button here this morning. Let's look at today's text and ask the same question. We have this classic scripture of the Christian faith. And many of us have heard it over and over and over again, right? Thousands of times, maybe even. And many of us think we know what it means. Maybe we thought we understood it and we thought we had tried to live it in the real world. Maybe we had even gotten comfortable with it. Maybe we even quoted it. Maybe you sang it. Maybe you prayed it. Maybe you preached it. Maybe you read the scripture. You've certainly heard it. But loving God and loving neighbor means something totally different in the way we embody faith a year ago than it does today. Who would have thought this pandemic would harm us in the ways that it has, would limit us, would endure in the way that it has? The social justice needs of lives in America finally coming to the forefront to be addressed. The division in our own culture that was certainly in the works a year ago, but now we seem driven even farther apart. Loving God and loving neighbor means exactly the same thing it did before and something completely different at the same time. Exactly the same thing, but something completely different. Loving God and loving neighbor meant for many of us, for our family, going to marches and protests and support the black community. Loving God and neighbor means, obviously from all of you, wearing masks in hope of not getting others sick as much as yourself especially the vulnerable parts of society. Loving God and neighbor means being as patient and understanding as possible with those people you're stuck in that house with. <laughs> Every day, for long periods of time. Loving God and neighbor has meant for us supporting a small new local business owner who just happened to pick the pandemic 
to start a new restaurant. What odds, right? Loving God and loving neighbor means relying on some close family and friend, family and friend relationships to get us through this the rest of this year. We hope. I know you've done that, and I know you've received that from others. So yes, loving God and neighbor means exactly the same thing. It's always meant, but something completely different because now is not yesterday, and tomorrow will not. Here's, I think, the crux of the problem. If you say Scripture never changes, doesn't adjust, is what it is, I think you might be a little too much in love with the idea of Scripture and not the action that it inspires. Let me say that again. I think we have to be careful not to be in love with the idea of faith, of Scripture, more than and overlook the actions that it inspires. I think this is exactly what Jesus was talking about and exactly why he kept getting in trouble. The establishment, the religious establishment, wanted him to prove that he knew the right things to say. This, this story proves it. Say the line you learned. Say the line we promote. Show us you know the law. And he never would quite give in to that. It is what it is kind of understanding. Instead, he fights against it. The religious establishment loved their rules and their laws. They thought they were unchanging and written in stone. Jesus comes along and says, hey, you want a couple of rules? I got two for you. How about God and neighbor? Bam. Jesus is reframing this for the people provides a sense of comfort, but also a sense of freedom. And it allows the people to adapt to a new time and a new place and a new way to live out what they believe. It also broke down some of the previous harsh barriers, rigid barriers between people. Jesus pretty much says, knowing that they're trying to get him to say something, hoping they can get him in trouble because he doesn't repeat the lines like he's supposed to, Jesus pretty much says, hey, if you're doing these two things, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. If we can manage to keep these things at the top of our list. So why this scripture now, today, How do we read it and hear it today? In a sense, that's the question we should ask every time, in every place. I can't tell you what it means for you today. I can't tell you exactly what you're feeling and where you're coming from to receive or be challenged by it or discard it. But what I hope we do is that we move out of this era of falling in love with the idea of Scripture, with the idea of church, with the concept of faith, and that we move and start to embody the actions, the love and compassion and justice that is clearly a part of what it is working to inspire. Amen. Well, good morning, Karsten. Good morning. Again, and I just praise God for being able to look in the face once more again. Truly.
COVID has been a trial for me, but he brought me over. And I know that you have had your, your things as well. So we're just going to praise God together and know that he is God. And he, and besides him, there is none other. And that we're going to love. We're going to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So as we go to the altar for his prayer time, I want you to just give me uh, some more to add to the prayer that I have. If you have prayer requests, as we usually do, uh, let me know. And I'll go to God with you, not just this morning, but the rest of the week. So, if you have any good things first that you would like to share uh, with the congregation, are there any good things? Well, I'm so happy to see your face, too. Amen. And likewise, you yes. 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 of the deceased from this virus. Okay. Anyone else? I'd like just keep the Atlanta VA Medical Center in your prayers because there's been a lot of false news on the television and everything. I work there and they give those veterans such good care. Okay. And I just hate that they get such bad press. So just keep all the employees and the doctors and nurses in place. Anyone else? Okay. I just want to lift up and I want to share with you um, my stepson, my, my uh, first husband's uh, uh, baby son had to be rushed to the hospital and he has diabetes and uh, well he just let himself go and both legs had to have surgery and the right the left leg had to be amputated and uh, he's still in intensive care uh, but the doctor says he looks good uh, he has normal temp and everything looks good uh, so he, the last report I got was that he was being um, fitted for a prosthesis. So uh, he called me and he wanted me to know, I love you, Mom and Dad. I just love you and I thank you for your prayers. I said, well, I'm not going. We've been praying and going around. And he says, but I love you. 
And that was good for me because I wanted to hear his voice uh, before the day went out. So Lev Kent, his name is Rodney Beatles. He's, um, he's the youngest son of my ex-husband, well, my deceased husband, uh, Rex Beatles. Okay. Anything else? I don't know, I got a call about um, Betty, um, what's it, Betty Cardell. Cardell's daughter-in-law. Have anyone heard any more about that? That she was in the hospital while we were out. Well, okay, I'll try to find out from Francis. I'll call her and see what's going on with that. Well, all right, okay. I have, I have one more. It's kind of a praise and a prayer request, but Jill, our friend here, is bringing home a baby on Tuesday to keep until the baby can find a permanent place. And she is, I think she needs all our prayers for joy and for she She's bringing home a baby. <laughs> She's bringing home a baby. A baby. She's gonna go meet the baby little girl um, when she leaves here. Isn't that exciting? Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Yes. I I wanted to look up a couple of things. Since we've met, we have a new grandson, and he's new here. And also. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. You said you'd like to lift up a couple of things. Yes, I heard. We have a new grandson. Since the new grandson, grandson. Yes. yes. And I have also lost a sister. You lost a like sister? You. Let's go to God in prayer. Where are you sitting? Gracious God, loving God, oh Lord God, we just thank you for our early rise this morning. And then you brought us, oh Lord God, down the busy highway so that we can be here, be here in this sanctuary. Lord God, one with another. And Lord God, we have the COVID virus still amongst us. And it's hindering a lot of things, Lord God, but you are enabling us to do what we can do. So, Father God, as we come to thy throne of grace, Lord God, we ask you to continue to keep us in perfect peace. Because you told us in your word, I'll keep you and I'll be with you, even until the end of time. No, you didn't promise there would be a smooth ride or things would go well all over, but he says, I'll be with you through it all. And Father God, we thank you all for your very presence, for your comfort. Lord God, because sometimes I can just feel the presence of some being around about me. And Lord God, I thank you for it. As all of us, Lord God, that are here in this sanctuary, because I know that you love us all and you keep us close to you. And you said, I will be your comfort. Just come unto me and I'll give you rest. Now, Father God, as we lift up these prayer requests, oh God, we ask you to remember the babies that's coming. And to the world, Lord God, keeping them in perfect peace, as well as their parents, Lord God. And then I understand that there is one that is in need of a touch of healing. Lord God, touch that, that young lady. Lord God, and then her husband is asking for prayer as well. Lord God, you heard the prayer with us. Keeping us, Lord God, as you said. But we have to just know whose we are to believe and know that you will do just what you said. Your word is true. I have found it personal that it be true. So we thank you for it, Lord God. We thank you for the presence. We thank you for the word. And Lord God, all of those prayer requests of different ones, oh Lord God, uh, Sister Lindsay's sister, and those others who are in need of prayer right now, 
Oh Lord God, we ask you to hear and answer their cries, attend unto their pleas. Lord God, and be that little something, that little breath of air, that little something that touched them to let them know that you, you're there. We thank you, Lord God, for it all. We thank you for the pastor and his leadership. Oh, and the first family as we go through this period of uh, this epidemic with the United Methodist Church. Lord, we, we ask you to just, and I join in the prayers of the many saints, the many ministers, pastors. Oh, Lord God, in saying, keep us, Lord God, keep us. Because in your word you say, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and call me, I will come and I will hear and answer prayer. So, Lord God, we ask you to bless the land. Bless the land, Lord God. There's so many families who have been victims, Lord God. And especially those who have lost loved ones. Lord God, we ask you to remember those families. And you are more than a comfort to them. You can be there for them, Lord God, as they remember their loved ones. Oh, keeping them in perfect peace. Because we will, we will overcome. I believe all of this shall pass. This too shall pass. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. Just thankful for it all. And all blessings we fail to ask of thee, please don't fail to grant. Because we stand in the need. And you are our, our, our one are the one, Lord God, that sees things before we ever even think about it. So bless us, Lord God, as we walk our walk, talk our talk, and do your will, Lord God. Keep us. Bless the clocks, the clocks of the membership. Bless those who are not able to come. Oh, let them know they haven't missed anything because, as I read in the program, come, come looking for a blessing. I have already received my blessing in seeing my sisters and brothers. And I'm sure the others have as well. So until we can meet again, Lord God, let us be coupled uh, in your hand of mercy and grace and love, Lord God, keeping us in that perfect peace as so only you can. For it is a servant's prayer. And in Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. 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 And thank God. Uh, as we close today, just a couple of things to share with you uh, before we depart. Um, the offering plates are in the center on the back there, and if you'd like to make your offering in that way, you're welcome to do so. Uh, they won't be passed around. No one's walking through the pews. Um, due to the new format. Um, those can continue to be mailed to the church. Uh, if that's how you are participating, great. Um, uh, any and all of that is welcome and appreciated for sure. Um, also, I want to remind you that as you leave today, you know, we can't do our normal hanging out together outside the church and, you know, talking and all that. So just... Uh, Try not to crowd on the way out as you're going, and um, but know that we are greatly appreciative of you being here and sharing your gifts and uh, joining us for this, this opportunity to be together. Uh, we will be together again at some point, hopefully again next week, and we will be in touch about that. I want to invite you to stand as you are able for the benediction. Almighty God, bless and keep us. Merciful God, make your face to shine upon us. Loving God, give us enough of your peace to change the world. Amen. Amen.